these two microphones, so I apologise for that. Um, I'd first would like to say thank you to Mr Henry for inviting me back to the school to present today's uh, prizes and congratulate everybody who, uh, who has won a prize today and for those that, that didn't but are still striving to uh, achieve those awards. I certainly enjoyed spending some time with some of the pupils early on today, whereas I still see the baby. Is your name? Bailey? Yeah. yeah. Alfie, still see Alfie sat down there. He's, he owes his mum a big uh, thank you for bringing his goalie books to take part in the futsal tournament earlier. And there's a couple of injuries from year nine for players who were injured by the year seven pupils. Um, we got the, uh, the run around earlier today, so thanks for uh, sharing that with me. Before I go on to my, the, the main part of my speech, I do apologise to the less sporty, um, because I've been sat in your shoes where people are in my speeches, whether it's inventors, scientists, and I'd be lying if I was stood here now saying that I wasn't sat there switching off, looking at a watch, thinking, come on, pal, we've got to walk back to the school, yeah, I've got my mum picking me up. So I apologise for the less sporty in the room, but I do hope what I'm going to say is uh, relevant to everybody in the room, teachers included. So a little bit about me for people that, that don't know me. Uh, I am an ex-Boston Grammar School pupil. I left in 1996. I am proud of being a Boston Grammar School pupil, first and foremost. I, uh, in my time at the school, we won everything. <laughs> we did win everything. We did beat Haven High, we did beat Middle Colt, we definitely beat Spalding Grammar at football. <laughs> The academically, we obviously wiped the floor with River in the school. I know um, my wife was a pupil at, at Haven High, and she, um, let's say I take care of the bills at home. <laughs> I left school at 16 to become an apprentice at Grimsby Town Football Club, and only 15 months later, making my professional debut age 17 against the uh, not so popular York City. But I then went on to play for pre sorry. I then went on to play professionally for 20 years, making near on 600 appearances, playing in all four professional divisions, and gaining four promotions along the way: two to the Championship and two to the Premier League. I was fortunate to play for Grimsby Town, as I said, Crystal Palace, Southampton, Bolton, Charlton, Carlisle United, and Exeter City. Fortunate enough to play against the likes of. I have to actually think about this because there's people in the room who won't know the players that I played against. So. So yeah, I did play against Ryan Giggs, Stephen Gerrard, Michael Owen, Wayne Rooney, and Gareth Bale. I have been fortunate enough to play at Old Trafford, Anfield, Millennium Stadium, Highbury, White Hart Lane. Again, thinking of the players I played with, most people in the room wearing their black and uh, gold tie won't, won't remember all of them, but certainly uh, Adam Alanas, Luke Shaws, Oxlade Chamberlains, Victor Moses, Nathaniel Clines, who still playing the trade in the Premier League. I was fortunate again to play under Alan Pardew, Mauricio Pochettino, Nigel Atkins, Neil Warnock, Trevor Francis for the older crew at the front and the back. And um, after retiring, I've then taken uh, the venture into a coaching career. Uh, my transition was smooth, going from playing at Exeter City and then moving into the first team coaching team, which I left 18 months ago to currently become the Southampton under 18 as coach. A role which I thoroughly enjoy in giving. Um, as much experience as my lifetime in football back into the youngsters of today. So before I move on to the before I move on to the, the main part of my speech, I I just thought I'd share a quick story of my, my time at, at Boston Grammar School. Obviously Mr. Dunn and Mr. Wainwright were certainly my favourite teachers because they were the PE teachers. Um, also Mr. Anderson who sat down the front here managed to uh, organise cross country events which managed to get me on school two or three days here and there. So thank you, Mr. Anderson. Um, obviously, the grammar school won all the cross-country events as well. As I mentioned earlier, we wiped the floor with everybody. Um, I remember I spoke to a couple of the, the younger pupils earlier today, and um, Mr. Ward and Mr. Oshkin have regarding my, my time as a Year 7 pupil. I remember arriving at the school, and the only thing, I shouldn't be saying this, the only thing important to me was making that Year 7 football team at the time. Obviously, education was, was vitally important. But for me, to actually uh, make sure I pulled on that gold and black shirt for the Year 7 pupils was, uh, was vital. And the whispers going around before the trials were, 
Hall Meadows is like from Tower Road. I'll tell you what, Hawthorn Tree is not like. So my nerves going into them trials were obviously gangling, and then I remember the day Mr. Wainwright and Mr. Mr. Dunn put that the uh, basically this, the 14, 15, including the subs, it was going to be in the, the first um, year seven competitive match against uh, one of the local schools, and my name was on it. So the relief of actually achieving year seven. Uh, the year 17 uh, to join the school was, was a big part of my development. So one of the main stories from grammar school, and I always remember to this day, and it may be a driving force behind my career, a, a part of it, because you always get questions asked whether you, you're doing the right thing, whether you're um, really going to make it as a professional footballer, for instance. And I remember sitting in the, the main hall, I've told this story to one or two already, so I apologise. I remember sitting in the, uh, doing my GCSEs, a 16, sitting in the main hall in the rows, I presume it's still the same now, and um, in the top left-hand corner of my desk there was obviously Daniel Butterfield, form 11A, leaving or staying on for the sixth form. And I remember sitting there nervous, thinking, oh, I'm out, I'm going to do this exam. And then Mr. Fitton, an old English teacher who I never actually had to teach me, quite an eccentric guy, bit of a curly moustache, always wore a bow tie strutted around the school as if there was never a care in the world and it was the sort of teacher I always wanted to teach me but this day he slammed his hand on the desk and said Butterfield leaving I said yes sir he said why are you leaving school I said I'm going to go play football sir and he went bear in mind I'm so nervous the school hall's really quiet down because it's exam time and Mr Fitton went ha 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 so I'm oh my God. He said, you're going to play football. Can you not do that at the weekend? I said, no, 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 sir. It's, um, it's to try and become professional, sir. And he said, Butterfield, you're making a big mistake. And walked off. So maybe this speech is for Mr. Fitton. <laughs> So when I, uh, I was asked to come back to the school by Mr. McHenry and, and deliver a speech, I tried to think of something, uh, uh, certainly a factor in my career, which, which I believe is, has got me to where, where I, uh, the things I achieved and where I am today. Certainly in life, words like determination, hard work, um, luck, being in the right place at the right time, having advice from colleagues, teachers, teammates, making sacrifices, being selfish. All these things are most definitely important, specifically hard work. But the main reason I believe that I made it as a professional footballer is, is my, my attribute of being self-driven. Now, by that I mean to become a footballer, there was, there's always obstacles, there's always people doubting you, there's always the belief from you as an individual, but for me to get to be to become as good as I did, obviously to the level of reach to be able to play professionally, I do believe it was driven from me. And I don't think, this is where, obviously I apologise to the non-sports, but I think it's relevant to everybody in the room, teachers included still today, that you need to be self-driven. You can't be reliant on the teacher telling you to shut up at the back of the class because you actually keep throwing your pen about. You can't be reliant on your parent who stood on the sidelines for me in football saying, Danny, run back. You need to drive it yourself. And even today in coaching, for the players that are going to make it, I believe it's the ones that are self-driven, the ones that don't require that extra push, the ones that do go out every single day and work as hard as they possibly can. I sat watching Mo Farah receive his uh, award for the sports personality uh, the other evening, and I guarantee you that Mo Farah never used to turn up to the running track and have a nice little skip around it, thinking I'm going to be on the podium one day. He drove himself. It was him who was in control of his hard work. So whether you want to become a musician, Harrison was playing there earlier. Very good. I enjoyed that. Very good. So whether you want to be the next Harrison, whether you want to be a teacher, whether you want to work in Tesco's, whether you want to uh, go to university and become an inventor, whether you want to become a scientist, whatever you want to become, you drive it. You drive getting there, you be the one that believes you can get there, and you be the one that drives it. Don't rely on anybody else. And then I believe that you can go and achieve it. And as I said before, there'll be obstacles. There's definitely obstacles in my career, being released from, by Leicester at 16 and then having to go and trial at Grimsby. But again, 
through adversity, it was me that was driving myself to become the person I am today. And that doesn't stop. It never stops. I'm sure there's teachers who sit in the room today and there's most definitely pupils that really annoy you. Because I have the players in my academy right now. But you have to drive yourself to continue to do the best job for the youngsters that you're trying to teach. So it affects everybody. And it will never stop. It never stops for me to this day where I still aspire to be a first team manager somewhere in the country. And it's something I will achieve because I'll drive myself to go and achieve it. So before I blubber on anymore and you start falling asleep or looking at your, did you just look at your watch? <laughs> before you start looking at your watches for that hike back across town, again, I'd like to thank Mr. McHenry for, uh, for inviting me back to the school. As I said right at the beginning, I am, I am proud to be an ex-Boston Grammar School pupil. I do fly the back, uh, sorry, I do fly the flag for Boston Grammar School and I'm proud to do it and fly the flag for the town. I congratulate everybody who's received an award today and I also congratulate the others that drive yourselves quietly to become successful in whichever career you wish to take. Thanks again for the invite and I wish you all a happy 2018. hard work of a number of schools for various respectable achievements. A number so vast that the school takes pride in annually hosting this ceremony to congratulate these students with the credit they all deserve. And I'm certain that every single one of your parents, carers and friends share that pride with the school, as they rightly do. However, there is one person here today whom I have been asked to talk about in particular, who I'm sure has endless experience of making himself, his loved ones, and our school proud, and that is our own Danny Bufffield. For those of you who don't know already, Danny is now an assistant coach at Premier League Club Southampton, as he said, after formally making a professional career playing for a collection of highly successful clubs, including Crystal Palace, Charlton, Bolton, Carlisle, Exeter, and Southampton themselves. Despite being born and raised in Boston, Danny began his youthful career at local rivals Grimsby Town although it's done by how Boston players you can blame them. As well as contributing to an accumulation of team accomplishments, Danny was a selection of very respectable individual achievements, including scoring his first senior goal in the club's 1-0 Football League trophy victory over Hull in the 97-98 season for Grimsby, scoring a perfect hat-trick in a time of 6 minutes 48 seconds against Wolves in the 2009-2010 FA Cup fourth round replay, a club record which he holds to this day, as he played as a major striker. And being part of the Grimsby team that defeated Liverpool in the League Cup in the 2001-2002 season. Saying that this isn't the 20th century anymore, so maybe that last one isn't so special. Danny has played in over 500 career games in a 22-year endeavour. 569 to be exact. I say exact, I'm sure Danny knows better than I do. I only know as much as his Wikipedia page. But nonetheless, it is a fascinating figure and achievement to reach, and one that a never-ending number of aspiring footballers can only admire, some of which I can assume are sat in this very room right now. Not only that, but after his prosperous playing career, Danny went on to coach the under-18 academy team back at Southampton Football Club, a team that are currently 12th in arguably the most competitive league in the world. Danny has been spending the last year teaching, inspiring and helping young adults just like us make successful careers out of the professions that we are motivated by most. This is not a message that is addressed solely to the sporty or athletic students, but one that I hope is applied to each and every one of you. Danny put all his ambition and determination into doing something that he craved to pursue. As he said in Year 7, he focused solely on getting that Year 7 trial. In some cases along the way, I'm confident he has to be persevering too. As gifted as he is, Danny can't win every match, nor can any footballer. All of you will understand that not every game ends in the result you want. My belief can make the right choice and do the right thing every single time, but that doesn't mean that you've lost. We still have hundreds of achieving students who should feel honoured to be collecting their prizes today, as well as our guest speaker, who despite not winning every game he's ever played, has still had a room 
has still had a remarkably successful career that we can only admire. Speaking on behalf of the school, we are privileged to have such a respected old boy return to speak to you all on prize giving. I congratulate those of you collecting the prize and wish the rest of you the best of luck in your season one next year. I'm positive that Danny can convince you that if you really work for it, nothing is unachievable. Thank you. to a man who has managed to make something of himself. A man who set out to pursue his dreams and achieve them. And I don't think you need to be a football fan to recognise the hard work, determination and passion Danny Butterfield has shown to reach the position he is in now. Moreover, I think he is an inspiration to us all, not just because of his successful career, but because he's a reminder that it doesn't matter who you are, what you look like, or where you're from. If you want something badly enough, then nobody can stop you. He walked down the same corridors as you, made friends in the same beast yard, ate in the same canteen, and was probably taught by Mr. Wright at some point. <laughs> um, we actually did contact one of his old B teachers, Mr. Wainwright, to find out more about how Danny was as a student. He responded with, my recollections of Danny were of a modest, hard-working young man. He was a talented footballer, but did play other sports, including a game of rugby sevens for the school team. He even went on to wonder, did he choose a wrong career? As a student at Boston Grammar School, he was no different from any of you, and I am so proud that our school has such a great motivational example of what can happen when you recognise your true potential. As Walt Disney once said, all our dreams can come true if we have the courage to pursue them. And now we would like to present you with a trophy um, as a token of our future. Standing for the school song followed by the national anthem.
Thank you all. Can I ask you all to be seated, please? In a moment or two, I'll ask my colleagues to take charge of these students and make sure that everybody gets back safely to the school. Can I just ask uh, four more round of applause in a moment, please, for the musicians who have done such a splendid job, especially, actually, thanks to the efforts of Miss Briscoe and Mr Lyon, who've done brilliantly today. Can I have that one last round of applause, please? Can I just wish everybody here a very Merry Christmas and a fantastic 2018. Thank you very much.